Hello everybody! My name is Leslie. I'm known as Nick California on Instagram and now on YouTube. And welcome to episode one of the Nick California podcast. Um, I've been sharing my knitting on Instagram for almost a year. It'll be a year in July. And I figured now was a great time to get started also sharing my knitting on YouTube. Um, I've got a couple finished objects from this year. I've got a lot of stuff on the needles. And this has been something that I've been wanting to do for a while now. I love watching knitting podcasts. Um, I've had a couple of people make comments on my Instagram stories saying they'd be interested in seeing a podcast from me and that really just sparked all of this. Um, so thank you for those of you who pushed me and like gave me the courage to do this. Um, yeah, I live in Southern California, um, a little bit north of San Diego. Um, so that's where the name Knit California came from. There are a lot of knitters, you know, uh, in the Midwest, on the East Coast in the United States, and in Europe where it's like a lot colder for a lot longer periods and times of the year. Um, and being in California, you know, especially Southern California, it's warm uh, most of the year. And so I really wanted to share, uh, starting in my Instagram, um, like the whole reason I kind of started it and came up with the name Knit California was I wanted to share knitting and show people what I was making while living in Southern California where it's a little bit warmer. Um, I think so far in my knitting journey, I have made a lot of sweaters, like warm sweaters, but now it's May 1st today. We're starting to come into summer. Um, I think transitioning into a lot of summer knits is going to be happening. And I really wanna start sharing uh, more spring, summer things, knits, crochets, um, that would be appropriate for living in a warmer climate. Um, so that's kind of what this is all about. So let's start with what I'm wearing. Um, this is the Souffle Tee by Laura from Penrose Knits, and I was chosen as a test knitter for this pattern. It was my very first test knit, uh, which was super exciting, and I have to say I am absolutely in love with this knit. Um, so some of the details, I made the size 5 uh, short sleeve version, um, but to be fair, I was actually chosen to test knit the long sleeve version, um, which I did, but I had some issues. Uh, one of my puppies ate, uh, chewed up a ball of yarn. Um, and so when it got to the end, I had one sleeve done. I had everything done except for the second sleeve. I didn't have enough yarn. Um, so I sent my tester notes in to Laura. I finished the test knit portion, what was required of me, and I actually frogged a whole sleeve down to the short sleeve um, and changed it to the short sleeve version, which I'm really happy I did because first of all, I was able to finish. And second of all, um, I just think this is more appropriate and wonderful for Southern California weather. Um, and again, yeah, absolutely love it. So this is knit um, with, oh shoot. Okay, you can see this is the amount of yarn that I had left over. Uh, so definitely not enough for a second sleeve. Um, and this is a completely different color, but this is knit with Lang Lace yarn. It is mohair and super kid silk. What is interesting about this yarn, what makes it super special is the actual blend of mohair and silk. So it's 58% mohair and 42% silk. A lot of mohairs that you find out there are closer to like 30% silk, maybe 20% silk and the rest mohair. So with this having a much higher percentage of silk, it is extremely soft. Um, if you have been hurt by mohair before, it's been uncomfortable for you, I would really recommend trying this one out. Um, again, this is the Lang Lace Super Kids Silk Mohair. Uh, it is a little bit more on the pricier side because it does have more of a silk content, but 
I can wear this all day with no problems at all. Um, no itching and it's lovely, it's wonderful. So a little bit about the construction of this. Um, it's knit top down, it's a circular yoke and this top kind of sheer portion is knit with one strand of mohair and then you get down below the ruffle um, the body, the sleeves are knit with two strands of mohair, so it's not as see-through as the top portion. Um, and again, I have been wearing this non-stop. You've probably seen it on my Instagram if you've been following me over there. Um, I've been wearing it to so many fancy occasions. I wore this to Easter brunch. I wore this to Las Vegas for my birthday, a birthday dinner, um, a birthday brunch to the casinos, just all over the place. Um, I wear it out to happy hours. It's like the perfect, like fancy slash casual top. Um, and it's just great. And I don't know if I can show you this, but it has a little keyhole detail with a button in the back. Um, and one of my favorite outfits has been pairing it with this flowery skirt um, and it's just wonderful. It's a super, super great knit. Um, I actually hit a lot of firsts with this knit. It was my first time testing, my first time using mohair at all, let alone a whole garment just full of mohair. Um, there is some new techniques to me in this knit. I consider myself like an intermediate knitter but I had never done a ruffle before. I had never like picked up stitches in the middle of a garment. Um, this is a folded over hem on the sleeves and of the body too. And that was something I had never done before. Um, I think it can be a little bit tricky just to make sure your tension is accurate when you're doing something like this. Uh, the first time I did the sleeve, it definitely came out way too tight uh and i had to redo it um so like making sure you do a stretchy bind off before you sew it down um, is definitely important um i had never done an applied eye cord like this before so when you cast on you're casting on here but then you come back later on in the pattern and you pick up stitches and knit this eye cord to give it a really, really clean finished look. And that was something I had never done before either. So a lot of firsts, um, I can definitely say I was challenged by this knit, but at the end of the day, it's done. It's beautiful. I love it. So I really would recommend knitting this. Um, and if you're interested or you really like this pattern, this style, um, Laura from Penrose Knits also has a chunky version that will be coming out later this fall. She also has a petite souffle um, for kids, so the sizes are much smaller. And she has a summer souffle version that is going into testing very soon and should be out soon after that. Um, so I'm definitely going to be knitting that. I applied to test knit, but even if I do not get chosen, I will still be knitting that as soon as the pattern comes out because I think it's the perfect knit um, for summer and coming up summer in Southern California. Okay, so moving on, um, I did want to talk about one other finished object. This is my only other sweater finished object that I have from this year so far. Um, and it is this one right here. This is... Dun, 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 dun. This is my Aosta sweater. Uh, I have so many words and yet no words at the same time for this sweater. Again, it's one that I absolutely love. Um, so this is the Aosta sweater pattern by the Knit Pearl Girl. It was knit, I made it in um, We Are Knitters The Merry Wool in the colorway Sprinkle Fantasy which everyone says looks like Funfetti, and I have to agree. Um, Funfetti is my favorite cake flavor, so I absolutely love whenever anyone says that. Um, but, okay, so I knit the size large. 
Um, I have about a 40 inch bust, so that's kind of large, um, size four or five uh, is what you can expect to see sizing wise um, from me here. Um, and the way this is knit is top down. It's a raglan style sweater, which if you're not familiar, this right here is a, a raglan increase line. And so you get these cute, cute lines um, on the side of your sweater. You can see like this is the top, this is the sleeves, um, and the back is pretty much the same. In fact, uh, this sweater does not have any like short row shaping in it, so the front and back are pretty much identical, um, which is nice. So you can put it on either way, <laughs> whatever you're feeling like that day. Um, I, like, I haven't put like a tag or anything in here, so I never know what's the front or back. Um, but this is knit in what's called the Andalus Andalusian stitch, um, which you can kind of see. It's this series of um, knitting rows and then one row of knit one purl one. So it gives it this really gorgeous texture all the way through. Um, and the Knit Pearl Girl, Sophie, has a ton of patterns on her website, on her Ravelry, in this stitch pattern. So if it's something that you're interested in, um, she's got this version, a chunky version, a mohair version, a summer top version, a cardigan version, which I made last year, um, which is also great. So anything your heart desires, any type of pattern. Um, and the fun kind of story about this knit is this is actually the second time I have made this sweater. The first time I made this last year was actually my very second sweater I had ever knit. Uh, the first one was an extremely chunky sweater, which I just have to say I'm, I'm not a super big fan of like the chunky sweaters. Um, I think for me, like the size of my bust, they just don't look that good on me. Um, and so, but I felt like I was ready enough after making one sweater that I could make a sweater for someone else. Uh, so immediately after I finished that, my best friend was like, oh my God, you have to make me a sweater. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, I'm gonna make one right now. What do you want? And so we talked about it for a little while um, and we landed on the Ayasta sweater in Sprinkle Fantasy. Um, and I did a pretty good job. There were some issues. I definitely forgot to switch to a smaller needle size on the hem, maybe on one of the sleeves when I was doing the, the cuff, the ribbing down here. Um, I almost ruined the whole thing when I blocked it, which is why I'm so passionate about blocking now. Um, and if you've been on my Instagram for any amount of time, you probably have noticed a lot of blocking content. Uh, I really like to share all the steps that I take when I'm blocking sweaters because I think it can be confusing. I think there's a lot going on and people just like maybe don't fully understand it. Um, and it would have been really helpful for me to like see the whole process all the way through before I had done it the first time um, because I am such a visual learner and I know that there are probably others out there who are the same way. So. Anyways, yeah, I washed this. This yarn uh, stretches in insane amount. And so I washed it and the sleeves ended up like <laughs> three times as long as my arm. Maybe not that long, but like a couple inches past my arm. And I was like, oh no, Sarah's arms are not this long. This is going to be an issue. Um, and I frantically went to my Instagram stories and shared what the issues were. Um, and some wonderful people left me some videos to watch, some tips on how to fix it, uh, and it worked. And Sarah now has a version of the Funfetti Aosta sweater as well. Um, she did a whole unboxing of it and a photo shoot of it uh, in Montana where she lives, and it's absolutely gorgeous. And this past weekend, actually, when I was in Las Vegas, she came out to visit and we both wore our Aosta sweaters together. 
um, for a fun little video. So that's over on Instagram as well if you want to check it out. But it's so much fun having, at least for me, having a matching sweater with my best friend. Like we used to match in high school all the time. Like we'd go out to the movies or to the mall or whatever. Uh, or we'd go to Disneyland and be like, can we match? Can we wear the same thing? Uh, it's just a lot of fun. So now we have matching AOSTA sweaters and it's a dream come true. Um, this pattern I would say is at a beginner level. I think, you know, I made this as my very second sweater I had ever made and I got through it. Uh, so if you are interested in making a sweater for the first time, you've never made one before, I would recommend this pattern. Um, and if you're making this pattern, you have any questions about anything, send me a message, um, and I'm more than happy to help you out. So, yay! Okay, moving on to works in progress. I have about four pieces on my needles right now. Um, so let's go through them. I will start with... This is my cottage core crop. Ew. Okay, it's kind of hard to show because um, it's supposed to meet in the middle here. And I have not, you do the button band and it'll have buttons right here in the middle. But you do this part last, so it's kind of hard to show it. But, um, I have finished the sleeves. These are little little frilly sleeves, which I wanna block and kind of um, smooth them out a little bit. And I'm close to being done with the body. I've got a couple more inches left. Here, if you can see. Um, a couple more inches left on the body. Now it is a crop top. It is supposed to be cropped, um, but I am gonna be making this a couple inches longer than the pattern calls for because I don't want it quite as cropped um, as it says it's supposed to be. I find that in most of my knits, just like my boobs take up so much of the fabric um, and I don't want it to end just like right below my boobs. I want it to have a couple more inches. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so this is the Cottage Core Crop by Mezzo Makes, um, Kate from Mezzo Makes. And I actually started this as part of a knit along that Kate is running called the Mezzo Makes Along. Um, and I have really wanted to make this pattern for a long time. And so this was the perfect time to do it. The yarn that I'm using, here I have a full skein of it. Skein, skein, I don't know. Uh, full skein, this is um, Sorella yarn in Stellina sock. Stellina means, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got sparkles in it, gold sparkles. Um, and this is the colorway Sleeping Beauty's Castle. This was from Sorella's Disneyland collection, which I actually like found Sorella, I think right around the time this collection was out last year. Um, and I did not buy anything, I kind of missed that, but it came around again in the Greatest Hits um, collection at the beginning of this year. So I made sure to snag, um, I got three skeins of Sleeping Beauty's Castle to make a summer top. And you know, I think it's absolutely perfect. Here, let me show you the back so you can kind of see how the colors are working out. Um, you can definitely tell like where I went from one skein to the next skein. Um, but I think like, especially on the front, you can kind of see where it gets like lighter. It's lighter at the top and then it gets darker. I think it kind of almost gives it like a tie dye look um, and almost like a faded, like light to dark look. So I'm actually not mad about it. Um, a lot of people asked if I was going to do like alternating skeins uh, in this pattern, which is kind of what you're supposed to do when you're working with hand dyed yarn. Um, and the reason I didn't was because of the construction of this. So it's a top down raglan style, but it's knit um, back and forth. 
because of this opening here um, and because of the buttons like I mentioned before so it's not like a continuous in the round construction and I didn't want to have a lot of ends to weave in or like bulk right here because I was just worried it would be too bulky um, and it wouldn't look good. So that's why I chose not to alternate skeins on this pattern. Um, but again, um, I'm not mad at how it's turning out down here at the bottom. Um, and I think it's going to be super cute. I kind of my goal for this sweater, um, tee, top, whatever you want to call it, is to wear this to Disneyland one day and like stand in front of the castle and just be like really cute matching colors with that. So I think it'll be really fun. Um, one of the things that I really love about this pattern, I don't know if you can like, yeah, there you go, you can see it, is the raglan detail here um, with these little holes uh, made with yarn overs. And I just think it's really cute. I've never made a raglan with this detail before um, and I love it. I love the ruffly sleeve. You've got a similar similar look going on here, if you can see the little holes here, um, which when I block this, you should be able to see it better. But yeah, this is, this is my first whip. Um, again, I'm almost done with it, so I'm really trying to concentrate and like work mostly on this one so I can get it done um, and get it off my needles because I've got... <laughs> Some more stuff that I am ready to cast on. So next, let's see, which one do I want to share next? Um, okay, while it's right here, um, check this out. Ooh. Do you know what this is for? If you've been on my Instagram, you know what this is for. Um, And here is the start of it. This is all I've done. But this is sweater number 15 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Um, it's an all over cabled sweater, which, yeah, I've just talked a lot about <laughs> living in Southern California where it's hot and we're coming into summer and you're gonna be like, Leslie, why did you start an all over cabled sweater? out of merino and mohair right at the beginning of summer and I will tell you because I wanted to um so the yarn that I'm using for this and let me get get two uh skeins that have the ball bands on them still so this is whoop, knitting for olive merino and Knitting for Olive Mohair. Both of these are in the color um, Dusty Aqua, which it's the super, super nice blue, almost blue green. Um, I really love it. I think it's really pretty. I think it's gonna be gorgeous in an all over sweater. Um, and I got this yarn and this is just like, softer than any yarn I've ever used um both the merino and the mohair and I've never done a sweater with like two strands held together um and so I really wanted to know what it was like um and I just I actually bought this for a different pattern and really wanted to also try my hand at cables and so this is what I ended up swatching um and fell in love with the swatch and just decided it's my birthday hey, hey I'm gonna cast this on because I want to so that's the reason why I just really wanted to it was like a treat um, and what I love about this actually hold on let me see yeah I don't know what I love about this is it's a knit that like takes a little bit more thought you know, it's not just stockinette knitting in the round, which I love. Like, sometimes you need a project like that. Like, when I knit, I sit in front of the TV. I just love, 
I love watching reality TV um, and some days my brain cannot handle much more than like <laughs> trash TV and knitting in the round. But other days I really want to be like thinking a little bit more um, and trying a little bit harder when I'm knitting. So that's what this is for. Um, it's not just, you know, stock and knit, it's knits and pearls. Uh, and especially the part that I'm on now, you can see we're doing some increases. Uh, you know, it's make one left, make one right. There's also make one left pearl and make one right pearl because right now we're knitting front and back. It's not in the round yet. Um, and so there's always something going on, always something to think about. You know, am I, am I on a knit? Am I on a pearl? Do I need to do an increase? When I'm increasing, do I need to, you know, lift it from the front or from the back? Do I purl from the front or the back, right? There's so much to think about. So that's why I really like this one. Um, additionally, like going back to the yarn, this is probably one of the softest fabrics I have ever felt and ever made. Like if you have not tried knitting for olive, um, merino and mohair combination together, you gotta try it because it's really, really soft. Um, and they do ship to the US. And if you're getting a sweater quantity, it's probably worth it. The shipping isn't too, too bad um, price-wise. So yeah, the other, um, the other thing I have on here, which um, I'll talk a little bit more about later, is this row counter, which, oh, you can't even see. There you go, a little shooting star. Um, is really helping me keep track of rows. So this is actually a perfect 10 row repeat and I've got uh, 10 beads on here to count rows, which is awesome. Um, and I've got a little stitch marker on this end to help me remember, you know, where my increase cable is also. And both of these two tools are from um, Twice Sheared Sheep, which is a shop uh, that sells knitting tools here. Um, in the U.S. They're actually located in Idaho. Um, and yeah, I'll tell you more about them at the end. But this is my sweater number 15 whip. Um, let me see. Let me give you some more details about this. Um, so I'm making the size large. This is meant to be a very oversized sweater. There's supposed to be a lot of positive ease. Um, which I like, but I think technically for my chest size, I should be making an extra large. Um, but I decided to keep with the size large just so that it was slightly less positive ease. I think it'll just be better. So we'll see how it turns out. Um, this construction style is different from... Um, a lot of other constructions that I've done. Like, so this is the back, so like put it right here this is the neck and then it's going down um getting all tangled here and then you can see like this raglan um is like the shoulder increase right there so um oh <laughs> just yarn falling all over um but yeah so it starts with the back panel and then eventually i think will connect the sides and, and start bringing over the front panel, but totally different from any, anything else that I've made um, construction wise. So I'm excited about this. Um, again, just really, really happy with this project. Okay. My third and final sweater work in progress oh okay okay <laughs> is this do, 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 do. okay it's kind of hard to see there we go this is here's the one sleeve i have this is my moonset tea by ozetta um i am making I'm making the size extra large in this. Um, I wanted it to be have a little bit more positive ease, so I'm making the size extra large. It's a V-neck t-shirt, 
Um, this is actually the one short sleeve that I have so far. Um, and I am knitting this in also Sorella yarn, um, classic sock in the colorway Velvet. This is from the Fall Tonals collection, which is this super deep blue color. Um, it actually reminds me of the ocean. I think it's just lovely. Um, and it's, it's a, uh, tonal. So there are some slight, slight, you know, variation in color. You can kind of see, oh, there we go. Okay. You can kind of see like light, light parts, dark parts. Um, but I think that gives it some depth. So I'm really enjoying that. Now I have had this on my needles since the end of December. This is my longest uh, sweater whip and I'm probably like only halfway done. So coming up next, I have to uh, pick up and do the second sleeve. Um, I've really been enjoying knitting the sleeves first before finishing the rest of the body. I think it just like really motivates me to keep going in general. Um, this project has definitely been like my backup project since December, but it's still a great project. But yeah, so knitting the sleeves first really kind of helps with that um, because I feel like, you know, I'm almost done when I've done two sleeves. You've done the yoke, you have two sleeves, and then it's just body to finish. Um, and again, that's that's your, you know, mindless stockinette knitting, at least for this pattern, where I can just sit in front of the TV and just go. Um, now this is made with fingering yarn held single. Um, so the needle size is pretty small. Oh, I don't even have needles on this project anymore. I've just got it on stretchy cords because I, I had cut the body yarn to do the sleeves. Um, but um, yeah, anyway, yeah, so small, small needles, I think, which is kind of why this has been on the back burner, because um, it just takes a long time, but I'm loving it so far. I've tried it on, and it looks good. It fits so far, which is great. Um, so the construction on this is kind of similar, actually, to sweater number 15, where you start with the back panel, um, and then you like attach it here and knit the front and since it's a v-neck here you go you knit like one side and then you knit the other side and then you finally connect it in the round right here um and then for the collar this was like super interesting you start it out just on its own um and then you attach it here and like in the front sections, you're knitting it as you're going, which is really nice. Um, that was something new I had never done before. And I really liked doing that because you don't have to like do it separately, add it on, pick up stitches. That just, picking up stitches is still something I'm not great at. Um, I feel like I'm finally getting better at it. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of tips and heard a lot of people talk about it on Instagram, like how they do it, what their process is. So I'm finally starting to get a little bit better, but I always feel like it, I'm never picking up the same number of stitches on like both sides, so it's not even. Anyways, once I figure out more, uh, maybe I can share more about that. But um, And then yeah, so this neck piece, eventually I'll kind of sew it down here uh and it'll all be together so that's where i'm at with this yeah okay i have one last um work in progress that i want to share dun, 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 dun. okay that was fun <laughs> um so this is my adventurous scarf um, and this is actually a Tunisian crochet project. The pattern is by Tony from Teal Yarn Crafts. Um, and the yarn that I'm using for this, here I'm gonna, you're just gonna plop it over like this. I like this part the best. Oh, actually, hold on. Hold on, I have an idea. 
Don't want to lose the yarn. This is a scarf, so it's kind of going to look like this. All right. It's a little silly, but whatever. Um, <laughs> okay. The yarn I'm using for this is um, Ken Yarn. These are DK Minis from the Advent that he did um, over the holidays last year. It was called Color Roulette. And so everybody's box was completely different. Um, you got 25 mini skeins, all different variegated colors. Um, and so it was so fun opening that every single day because it was like, what am I going to get? I don't know. Um, but I have, I should have brought them over here, but I have about six more colors left plus these two that I'm currently working on. Um, and then this will be done. And this is just like such a fun pattern. Um, I think this is perfect if you have you know, advent minis or like any sort of mini skein set um, because it's like, you know, color changing where you do like one row of one color, one row of the other color. Um, and then like the colors all overlap each other. And it's this really cool diagonal striped pattern. It's just like really, really fun. And you can see, so I started down here with this purple. So you do the first color by itself until you add in a second color. Um, but I get, I get a lot of love, a lot of comments whenever I share this on Instagram. I think it has to do with all the like beautiful colors that are in it. Um, and a lot of people are just like really interested in Tunisian crochet, um, which is super fun. So I would say if you are somebody who has never done Tunisian crochet, you're interested in it, definitely, definitely go check out Tony from TL Yarn Crafts. Um, her YouTube channel has a ton of tutorials um, on Tunisian crochet. Uh, she's how I learned. I watched all of her tutorials um, and I knit her like stitch sampler blanket uh, back in towards the end of 2020. Uh, and so all those tutorials are still on there. Um, and that's how I learned. So this has also been on my hook since January. Um, so it's a long standing project. But it's fun. Um, I kind of bring it out whenever I need a break from knitting. I'm like, let's do some crochet, um, specifically some Tunisian crochet. So that's what we do. Um, so yeah, super fun. And then I, well, I put the yarn in the hook right here when I'm ready to kind of put it away. And I just roll it up. It goes back in my bag. <laughs> okay, so a couple more things that I wanted, yeah, one more piece of yarn that I wanted to talk about, and then I'll come back to my knitting tools and twice sheared sheep. Um, so the next thing that I'm getting ready to cast on is my knit collage make along. Um, can you guess what I'm making? Da -da -da. I'm making the Corinne Cardi. So this is a granny square cardigan. You can see right there. So the back and the front two like panels are made out of granny squares. And then you pick up and knit the sleeves. So it's like a combination knit and crochet piece, which I love. Um, actually, if I'm being totally honest, I had a very similar idea, um, that I started last year of a sweater that I wanted to make that was a combination like knit and crochet and involved some granny squares, um, that I wanted to design and it's still <laughs> sitting over there unfinished because I got too scared. Um, it's different. It doesn't look, it doesn't look like this so it's a little bit different but who knows maybe this year I'll pick it back up um and finish it if not as my first design then at least for myself so but I wanted to show you the colors that I'm going to be using okay I've already opened this so let's see if I can okay I'm obsessed so my main color um, this is, it's white, it's called Polar Bear, 
And this is the Serenity Boucle yarn from Knit Collage. It's super soft, super lightweight. It's, I knit um, my last make along knit that I did was the Express Yourself sweater that was knit all in this yarn. And I love it. I wore it all through winter. It was extremely warm and extremely lightweight. So I'm excited to be making a cardigan out of this because I think like cardigans are perfect for spring and summer. You can just throw it on like if you're in the office, offices are always cold. If you're out to dinner at night, maybe it's windy, it gets chilly, whatever. They're perfect. Okay, so the fun part of this pattern is that all the granny squares are made from Knit Collage's Wildflower yarn. Ah! Okay, so if you've never... Oh, plop that down. Okay, if you've never um, seen Knit Collage's Wildflower yarn, this is actually like a fabric yarn. Um, so it's like fabric that's cut into strips and you actually like knit and crochet with this. Um, which is super cool and because it's fabric they have so many different colors so many different patterns um, so this orange one is kind of like the I have the most of this and then you get two of these like mini skein sampler kits to work with and so I'll just sh show you some of the colors this yellow is one of my favorites this light blue also love a red this white with like pink and yellow, a pink, a pink, do you know me? Pink, okay. Yeah, I should have gotten more of this. Maybe I'll order more, who knows. Um, and then there's more over here. Some of them are duplicates, but like this light pink one is cute. Oh, this pink is actually different. So that's cool too. And then this kind of like blue green one is really pretty, so. I can't wait, I'm gonna cast this on soon, but you can see like you use all those mini skeins for like the middle of the um, granny squares that you crochet and then you do the white around it. Um, and so this is part of Nick Collage's spring make along, which actually kicked off on April 25th. Um, <laughs> the best day, that's my birthday. Um, but <laughs> I haven't started this yet just because I've been so busy with everything. So soon i'm gonna um i'm gonna cake these all up with my ball winder and get ready to do like color pairings i have to decide you know what colors do i want to pair with the others and the granny squares which is honestly one of my favorite parts of any project especially if there's a lot of colors is like figuring out how all of the colors are going to go together and where they're all going to sit i just think that's so much fun so so that's going to be next so Look at all this. Look at all of this. Yay! <laughs> okay. Um, yes, so um, lastly, let me grab a couple things. Um, okay, so I mentioned before when I was talking about my sweater number 15 whip, um, I was also kind of at the point where I was going to show this to you and then I held off, but we're coming back, circling back. So this row counter, isn't this just the cutest little shooting star you've ever seen? I love it. This stitch marker. Okay. Um, these cable needles. These are bamboo cable needles with little like ridges on them right here to help hold the yarn. And these, oh, where am I holding these? Okay. Um, these are increase and decrease row counters also. Um, so all of these items have been gifted to me by Twice Sheared Sheep. Um, Dawn at Twice Sheared Sheep. And I want to share these with you because I actually have an affiliate link with Twice Sheared Sheep, which means if you click on my link, um, which I will leave down below, and you buy anything from their shop, I get a small commission on these items. Um, 
this is something that is like really exciting for me when I started my Instagram last year you know it was really just to share my projects and it was to talk to people other knitters in the community um, I say knitters but you know I mean knitters crocheters makers yarn dyers everyone in the community and so Dawn reached out to me in February and asked if she could send me some items if I could share them on my Instagram um, if I would use them in my pro projects and I took a look at her website and I was super excited about this opportunity because I've always wanted to try one of these row counters um, and this is like she's got a bunch of stuff on the website but like I, ha I would say this is one of the like bigger things on there um, and I've always wanted to try one of these and it has been absolutely perfect for this project specifically um, like I mentioned before because it's a 10 row cable repeat and there's 10 rows on this but I can also see this being used for like counting rows on sleeves to make sure you're matching sleeve length on both sleeves. I can see this being used um, on a uh, raglan sweater. I can see this being used on shawls to like count out if you have different sections, um, on hats to count out your rows. Like I feel like row counters are very very useful. Um, and so now that I've had it on this project, um, I'm going to say for a while, even though it doesn't look, look like it's really, you know, been a while, but this has taken me a while. Um, I, I can't like say how much I like this. Um, it's just been so useful. So I wanted to share this, I wanted to share this stitch marker. Now you're probably like, Leslie, I have a hundred thousand stitch markers. Why do I need another one? Um, well, I will tell you that, so this is like an, inf if you can see that like infinity design, um, it just makes it really easy to like stick your needle in the like, you know, little triangle pointy piece and like move it over. Um, so if you're looking for new stitch markers and you want to try one like this, these are super easy to use and to like move across your needles. Um, I've also been using this bamboo cable needle on my cable sweater. Um, I think a lot of people use the U-shaped ones, uh, which are fine. Like, obviously those work well. Um, this, I think being wood, really helps the stitches stay. Um, and then you can just like knit right off of it. So these are super useful as well. And these ones I haven't used yet, but let me show you the little charms are um, a little sheep and an alpaca and for all of her all of the row counters like these ones these ones there's like a ton of different charms that she has so she's got sheep she's got dogs cats um, all sorts of things so but I can see these I haven't like I said I haven't used it yet but I can see this being super useful for a raglan increase sweater where you're like knitting one round and then increasing the next round um, I know this is how the um, uh, Cozy Classic Raglan is knit. I knit one of those last year, and so it's like a knit one round, increase the next round. Um, and this would be super useful for that because, you know, when I was knitting that, I always remember thinking, am I on a knit round? Am I on an increase round? And I had to get really good at reading my stitches, which I think is really important for knitters to do. But once you're a little bit past that, you're just like, I need something quicker. I don't want to have to count every single row that I'm on. Um, these would be really helpful. So again, I wanted to share, um, if you are looking for something like this, um, and you have been inspired to purchase, if you clicked on the link below, I would be very grateful for that. And if you feel like you do not want to click on the link below, that's totally fine too. Um, you can still check out Dawn and her shop at twicesheardsheep.com um, or at twicesheardsheep on Instagram. So, yeah. Um, I think that's it for today. This has been super fun. Um, I feel like I've gotten a little bit of the nervousness out. 
Um, and I've really enjoyed sharing all my makes. Um, you know, I do this on Instagram every day, but you really only get to see part of a project or like what I'm doing. So seeing them all together has been really fun. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions or like comments on anything that I've shared today, please leave them down below. Uh, it's one of my goals to always like respond to all the comments that I get so and messages that I get. So uh, I'll be responding to the comments. And if you found me here on YouTube, thank you. Wow, that's very exciting. Um, and if you liked what you have seen so far, you can see more on Instagram at Knit California. Um, lots of stuff going on over there. I, I really like talking in my stories um, almost every day and sharing what I'm doing. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, that's where that is. But yeah, so I think um, that's it. Again, thank you for watching episode one of the Knit California podcast. And I will see you back here very soon. Bye!